People who listen to this program on a regular basis may remember a couple of weeks ago, a question came up from a caller saying there were these stories that were making the rounds in newspapers and television news, Associated Press throughout Idaho, that dairy farmers and ranchers were clamoring for more illegal aliens, and they were opposed to some of the plans of President Donald Trump because it will harm the agricultural business, the sector in this state, because they won't be able to get the workers needed. And at the time, I made a reply that went something like this. Do every or does every last farmer and rancher in Idaho feel this way? Because you look at a headline and the headline will say, Farmers opposed to Donald Trump. And that's the story you get. And you feel, gosh, that must mean every last farmer. And I shared a story with you on the air about how when I was a young reporter, I went to cover a community meeting in a city where I was working. And I came back and I wrote a story and I said, Southside residents are angry with some of the plans from City Hall. And a managing editor pulled me aside and said, do you know if every person who lives on the south side is angry about this? And I said, well, no. And he said, have you talked to everybody who lives on the south side? And I said, no, just the people at the meeting. He said, well, then you have to say some. You might even say many if it's a large number, but some is probably the safest route. Some people who live on the south side aren't pleased about this. But you didn't talk to everybody. And I was making a point that when you sometimes see these stories, keep in mind, mainstream media is nothing but a propaganda wing for the Democrat Party. Even a lot of your local reporters who aspire to big big time reporting, whether at newspapers or in television or radio, they realize that in order to get accepted into those jobs, they have to ape the culture of those jobs. And the culture in those places, those big media outlets, is very, very liberal. So they can get away with saying and giving you the impression that everybody in the agricultural industry is opposed to Donald Trump's position on amnesty for illegal immigrants or open borders. I bring that up because today, this came from a newspaper out of Nampa called the Press Tribune. This is the headline. Immigration reform petition from dairyman tallies 3,000 to 3,500 signatures of 10,000 goal. Hmm, okay. Gee, they're collecting a lot of signatures, aren't they? Uh, and, and against President Trump. A, rep- a reporter by the name of Olivia Weitz is the writer. She says, while the immigration reform petition launched by a Marsing area dairyman has fallen short of its goal of 10,000 signatures. Ah, so now as you're reading the story, if you look beyond the headline... He hasn't met his goal. Dairy industry leaders say they intend to move forward anyway with plans to press congressional leaders for reforms that help the industry's labor force. So in other words, we thought we'd simply get 10,000 signatures. We've got 3,000 to 3,500 and it's stalled. The petition started as a way to draw attention to the labor challenges in the industry, sought to collect 10,000 signatures, but as of Wednesday, the effort has... And then this... Check the language out in this sentence. The effort had collected as many as 3,500 signatures, said Bob Nerabout, executive director of the Idaho Dairymen's Association. As many as 3,500 is what the story says. In paragraph number two, it doesn't say 3,500. It says as many as. This is a little bit like hearing the guy on television who says, you know, you... You, you buy my product and you can earn up to $30,000 a year from home. Up to $30,000 from home. Also includes the number not. That is zero, nada. So you may not earn anything from home. So when you say you have as many as 3500 it could be less. How they have couched the language in order to try and sell you on this notion that the agricultural industry is opposed to Donald Trump and Donald Trump's position, his stance when it comes to illegal immigration and open borders, tells you all you need to know about how mainstream media operates in this day and age. 811, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We're at 25. On our way, probably into the low to mid 40s today, and means more snow and ice will melt. We're all for that, trust me. I don't think anybody out there wants a whole lot more of that. Talking about these issues, and I, I, I was telling a caller yesterday 
there really isn't a lot in, in related stories. There isn't a lot of difference between refugee resettlement and illegal immigration because we're dealing with newcomers, and some of those newcomers could be dangerous. Media has done this already when it comes to, I had a caller a few weeks ago who supports Trump's travel pause, but the caller referred to it as a Muslim ban. Why? Because media has been saying, Muslim ban, Muslim ban, Muslim ban, Muslim ban, Muslim ban, Muslim ban, until people start repeating it, even if they're, they're, they don't believe that. It is a pause in, in, in newcomers from seven countries where there are some dangerous situations right now because there may be some dangerous people among those refugees. So it is a travel pause. It is not a Muslim ban. But media has done its job so well. In the words of Mika Brzezinski, our job is to tell the public what to think. They have done their job so well that they have got people repeating Muslim ban when indeed it isn't a Muslim ban. This comes from the London Daily Mail, big newspaper in England, and a columnist there. She did a story a couple of weeks ago about a 45-year-old migrant, that is refugee, raping a 14-year-old girl. Well, she says today, it turned out, the girl only happened to be 12, and she says liberals are now criticizing her for getting her facts wrong. She said liberals have been reduced to using an argument like that. A 12-year-old girl was raped. Initially, the report was she was 14 years old, and she said liberals are now screaming, aha, we can't trust what you say. She wasn't 14, she was 12. Well, the police straightened it out, and they got the age corrected, and the reporter got it corrected. But they can't address the fact that there is violence that is being committed by some of these people. So instead they say, aha, 12, not 14. Ha! (laughs) That's the best they can do is her point. And she goes on to say, she's doing a follow-up. She says that there are many places in Sweden where firefighters can't even go to fight fires because the truck tires get punctured or their hoses get cut as they're trying to do their jobs. People throw grenades at them, homemade grenades, or shoot at them. Firefighters now have to go into the suburbs of big cities like Stockholm with police escorts. And the police often have to go in with armored vehicles as part of the escort. And she's talking to a police officer who is a 42-year veteran of law enforcement in that country. His name is Peter Springer. 42 years he's been policing in Sweden. He posted on Facebook, and this is a quote from his post, Here we go. This is what I've been handling from Monday to Friday this week. And he starts listing the cases. Rape, rape, robbery, aggravated assault, rape, assault, and rape. Violence against the police, threats to police, drug crime, felony, attempted murder, rape again. Suspected perpetrators. And then he starts naming them. Ali Muhammad. Mahmoud. Muhammad. Muhammad Ali. Muhammad. Again, again, again. Countries representing all the crimes this week. Iraq. Iraq, Syria, Turkey, Syria, Afghanistan, Somalia, Somalia, Syria again, Somalia. Do you see some patterns that exist here and that are growing? And liberals are still in denial about all of this. I mean, at what point? He's, <laughs> and he says he supports migrant programs. He admits to being a liberal, but he's telling you what he's going through in his job. It's not that he's making this up. This is factual. This is coming from the cases he's investigated, the types of crimes he's investigated, and the people who are involved in those crimes. He's just listing facts. He's not embellishing this in any way. Why is it that lefty out there, whether they be in Europe or this country, believes that we should continue down this path? Telephone number for reaching our program today. 736 300 736-0300. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. K-L-I-X and News Radio 1310.com. Did I just hear in the Fox newscast at 8 o'clock that the person arrested in the vandalism at the Jewish cemetery in St. Louis, Missouri, is Latino? Because the individuals, did I hear that correctly? The individual's first name was Juan Now, we've been hearing all along that uh, Donald Trump is inciting hate groups and all of those alt-right people from Montana and northern Idaho. They're traveling around the country and they're toppling Jewish headstones at cemeteries. 
We don't have any evidence, but we here in the media and the Democrat Party know because that's what they're like. So now you've got a guy who's arrested and his first name is Juan. Uh, that doesn't sound like somebody, an alt-right figure from Whitefish, Montana, or from Boundary County, Idaho at all. That sounds like it could be someone with Latin ancestry. Now, how is that going to be spun by mainstream media in an effort to discredit Donald Trump, who, by the way, has a Jewish son-in-law, who, by the way, has a daughter, at least one who's converted to Judaism, who, by the way, grew up in a city that is essentially the Jewish capital of the United States, whose mentor, the lawyer Roy Cohn, was Jewish. How, how does media square any of this? We have a caller with us. It's 817. You're up next. You're on KLIX. Yeah. Um, they're talking to the farmers needing the farm laborers, but um, they have a visa program, and I've worked with them because I'm a truck driver that does harvest. They come over and um, for six, six months at a time and, and do their visa, and then they go back home. Nothing wrong with that program. My friend Larry Bailing operates one of the largest apple orchards in uh, in the United States. For 25 years, Larry has been working with the same group of migrant workers. And in fact, Larry fills out, as he, he calls it, reams of paperwork every year and files that with the government. That same crew comes every year and works in his apple orchard and helps in the summer and through the harvest. And then what they do is they go home. And by the way, with the money they make here, when they go home, they can buy some of the nicest homes in their own country. I thank you very much for the call, which means, and maybe media is losing track of this, and maybe the liberals are losing track of this, that there are plenty of legal ways still available for people to come to this country and work. Yet they're focusing on some notion that if we had an open border, we wouldn't have to deal with any of these regulations. Uh, liberals love regulations until it comes to keeping America secure. Look, I'll get to my other callers in just a moment. I only have a few seconds left, and I don't think it would be fair to take a caller and say, all right, hey, spit it out, and then we've got to go. So uh, hold on to the uh, the telephone and give me a call again on the other side of the break. We're looking at warmer temperatures coming up in the next week. We may have some days in the 50s. Ah, that's going to feel nice. But we're still going to have some very cold overnights, and if you're having problems heating your home, and hopefully this will not be an issue in another 40 to 60 days, but you do need to call the pros at Ramsey Heating and Electric in Burley. The pros will come out and they'll get the job done right. They'll get it done right the first time. And they'd like to make sure that you know problem-free, cozy winners are found at Ramsey Heating and Electric. Located at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Telephone number 678-0459. Ramsey Heating and Electric, where they sell warm winters, cool summers. More coming up on this subject, and oh, we've got a lot to talk about this morning. We've got to talk a little bit more about the media, uh, Jeff Sessions, Donald Trump. I think that the media has pretty much spent its, um, well, I don't think they have many more bullets left when it comes to Sessions, but we'll talk about that in a few minutes. A couple of quick notes. Um, as I said, no firearms discussion today. Did I mention that already? I, I probably should, uh, and that's just simply because... Uh, the main host of that segment, the guy with all the answers, is not me. Uh, that would be Todd. Todd Eccles has a couple of other obligations he's got to deal with the next couple of Fridays. But that gives us more to talk about when he returns in a couple of weeks. In the meantime, Bill Colley with you on Top Story this morning on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. We're at 25. Telephone number for reaching our program today, 736 0300. 736-0300. Um, I, I just was watching a little note on my TV monitor here. Do you realize that the Russian ambassador, the same guy who's, who's – I guess you shouldn't meet with this guy because if you do, somehow it's a bad thing. He met with Barack Obama 22 times. I wonder what they talked about because it was Obama who told uh, Medvedev Oh, when I get reelected, uh, Russia will be allowed to do whatever it wants. Oh, somebody just told me the microphone's open. Bad, bad, Rusky. Bad, bad, Rusky. And seven Democrats serving in Congress have also been meeting with a man as well, just, just saying. 
Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Caller is joining us. Caller, you're on the air. Good morning, Bill. Well, there's a provision in the Constitution, Article 4, Section 4, that says our elected officials are to protect us from invasion. It doesn't say a military invasion, just invasion. And we're being invaded. This is the why isn't Saudi Arabia and all these other countries taking in refugees? Because the plan is to conquer the world, and they do it by invasion. There was a recent video that you probably saw from in, from Belgium, and this imam uh, bragging in, about the fact they're bringing Sharia law into that country, and that's what they plan for, for here. And they're already doing it in American cities, so let's just stop the whole nonsense before they take over, and uh, do what they want to do is conquer the world. Well, there was a video that came out last summer out of uh, Minneapolis-St. Paul area. I guess St. Paul has become a big refugee relocation. In fact, St. Cloud, Minnesota, Rochester, Minnesota, a lot of the cities there uh, have been you know, ground zero for this. And there were a group of Somali refugees who were being interviewed by, uh, by a reporter and the reporter asked what they thought of Sharia law, and one of them said, oh, you know, America's great. We've got no problems with the laws here. And then as they started discussing it, some of them started saying, well, that, but on the other hand, you know, Sharia has its good points. And then, you know, maybe someday it would be a good idea for the United States to have Sharia. And, you know, come to think of it, and that's how the interview went. I mean, and, and so as the, they, they progressed through the first few minutes of the interview. These guys went from saying, oh, apple pie, American flag, rah, rah, to... Yeah, you know, the day will come when we have Sharia law here, and it'll be a good thing. Well, their whole culture is they they are commanded uh, when Pastor Sharon was here hating uh, that they can lie. They're commanded to lie in order to accomplish their goal until they've taken it over, and then they're commanded not to lie. Well, it's too late then for us, and, of course, that's what they're doing. And they're bringing in, in Europe all these military-aged people. Very few children and women are coming along. So it's obviously an invasion of Europe. And what you just said about Sweden and other places over there, I mean, it's already too late. Um, they're, 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 how, do you, how do you get rid of that cancer once it's already there? So we have the opportunity to stop the cancer before it gets here. Yeah, I agree, and I thank you much for the telephone call. Uh, we, we still have liberals in this country who just somehow believe, and, you know, I, I cannot, I do not see a logical explanation for their belief system unless it's it's about destroying the United States of America. And I wouldn't put it past them. I'll just put it that way. That's why they're making common cause with these people. You're up next. You're on the air on KLIX at 825. Good morning, Bill. You know, I've said for years with uh, us not enforcing laws, and not vetting properly, that these people, uh, the Mexicans that are coming up from the border, the Muslims that are coming in, all are trying to conquer the country without firing a shot by just basically outpopulating us to the point that they become the majority rule. And, and, it, and it, it, it's been said many, many times in many, many videos that is their plan. Now, there are radicals out there that are going by by threats and everything else, but the majority of them are doing it strictly by inhabitation and population. Yeah. Uh, thank you much for the call. And, and, you know, I guess the belief on the American left is somehow that our culture is so bad, we need to destroy it. And that somehow these other cultures are better. I read a great point the other day about what's going on. The Mexican government now says it's going to take its complaints to the United Nations. Well, all right. You you, you don't have Canadians begging to come live here. So that's our other immediate neighbor. You don't have Canadians begging to come live here. You don't really have any Cubans either. I mean, there are some, obviously, for political reasons. But you've got people coming from Mexico in large numbers. That's got to be an admission from the government there that they've been so incredibly incompetent they haven't been able to provide for their own people. So their justification is, look, we can't do our job, so we want the United States to be a safety valve, so we're going to go tell the, the United Nations to give the good old USA a paddling. 
And then once they get the paddling, then we can have that open. Who? I don't think Donald Trump's going to be listening to the United Nations if it comes back and says, stop being mean to Mexico. If they didn't have an incompetent government allowing a narco-terrorist state to take root, then they wouldn't have this issue. But instead, for years, hundreds of years in that part of the world, they've allowed a cabal of a handful of people to oppress everyone else in the country and to, you know, steal the wealth. Well, you know what? That's not my government's responsibility. If you'd like, maybe we have to come and invade you again, march from Veracruz to Mexico City, topple the incompetent regime, and put something else in place, or colonize it. And then your people don't have to worry about coming here because they can enjoy all the fruits of what the United States offers as being a, a just being a, you know, a, a protectorate, if you will. 828, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, News Radio 13. Wow, first half hour is already done of this program today. Ah, time flies when you're having so much fun. I want to mention my friends at Waddell and Reed here in Twin Falls. Waddell and Reed is an investment firm that has been doing business now since 1937. For you liberals out there, that, no, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> They've been in business for 80 years. It is a firm that manages, uh, and it, one of the oldest firms in the country, I should point out, to manage mutual funds. And Waddell and Reed not only uh, manages mutual funds, but owns and manages two mutual fund families. And they'll invest money by a conservative nature. These are people, obviously, after eight decades in business who know what they're doing. They'll take a planning approach, and they'll look at each piece of the puzzle that you have when it comes to investment. What they do is help build proper expectations. And Waddell and Reed will build those plans around your needs and your goals, help you manage the money, as well as Waddell and Reed takes planning personally. 90 minutes of our program still ahead. There is a story that's coming out of one of the most liberal newspapers in New York, and it ignores a glaring and obvious, let me just put it this way, another Clinton crime family ally has turned up dead. Details ahead.